chocolate chip cookies that were still frozen because you were impatient and were not able to thaw them and bake them. Raise them high, sister. Okay. Now, I want you to keep your hand up if you have ever eaten frozen solid chocolate chip cookies on your in-law's toilet at 2 a.m. Well, that was me, and you're so welcome for that visual. <laughs> I was hiding in the bathroom from myself and the world, feverishly trying to fill the never-ending, insatiable black hole of despair and shame. Sitting on a toilet, eating frozen cookies, lovely visual I know, was not me living in the best most precious moment of my life. I was not in a high point. I certainly was not being my best me, my meest me. And I was certainly not in a place to contribute to the world. Not at all. How many of you here went to a traditional four-year college? You can raise your hand again. And chose a major to study, just so I can see. Okay. How many of you here went to the College of Life and got a degree in hard knocks or facing adversity? You could do both, it's okay. How many of you got a BA in the BS that life can throw you? <laughs> Just a few of us. Here is the irony. You study every subject except the most important subject on the planet. And guess what that is? Yourself. Yes, I went to college and got a double degree in psychology and public health. Mind you, I was researching and studying everybody else's psychology issues. But what I could have gotten my bachelor's in with a double degree was people-pleasing, and self-destructive behaviors. Today, years later, after many breakdowns, breakups, how many have done those? U-turns and breakthroughs, I turned the focus of my studies inward. All the data and research and findings, I turned it inward to obtain not a bachelor's, but a PhD in me. And here's why I urge you to get a PhD in you. A PhD, in case you didn't know, is a doctorate of philosophy. So now you can feel really smart, you know what that is. Right, the aim is to research a topic, a study, or a subject deeper than anyone else has. It's to be the primary investigator, use yourself as an instrument, and it's to become the lead researcher. See, here's the thing. We are all researching something in our lives. Maybe it's the research of comparing yourself to others. Okay, like that model in the magazine, you know who I'm talking about or the friend that you run into at your college or high school reunion that has 2.5 children and a summer home. Getting some heads nodding, uh-huh. Yeah, or, okay, who uses Instagram here? Let's raise your hand again, I wanna see. All right, that's decent, 50%. Yeah, on Instagram, where we compare ourselves to others' lives that seem perfectly all together. The problem is, I believe we're researching the wrong thing. We're researching others' decisions and choices, maybe even judging them a little, sometimes. 
We blame others' choices and decisions. You just turn on the TV and you can see that in action. Conversely, we also place quite a bit of weight, I know I do this, on what others think of us, their research and findings on us, when in reality, you are the only one who can do research on yourself. You're the only one with the full keys to the kingdom, the access of your own findings and your life data. You are the only one who can be the lead researcher in your life. We waste a lot of time and energy worrying and researching other people. What if we use that same amount of energy to investigate and understand your gifts and talents to the world? What would that be like? I realized that my life dissertation, the one that you heard about where I was eating frozen cookies and stealing food and binging on whatever I could find, I realized that my life dissertation was really not one leading me to any new brilliant sort of new discoveries. I was wasting precious time researching your perfect life, trying to be who you wanted me to be, only to miss the whole main point, to actualize my unique, one-of-a-kind contribution, which we all are here with. And I've heard it been said, you know, everybody else is taken, so you might as well be yourself. So yeah, the person with the master's degree in health and wellness coaching, with a concentration in nutrition, and over 12 certifications in mindset and well-being, that would be me, was surviving on frozen chocolate chip cookies. I was studying the wrong subject. And I was writing a life dissertation on self-loathing and victimhood. Can anyone relate? Hand up a little bit. I feel safe doing so. Yeah. I was writing a dissertation on self-loathing and victimhood versus being the meest me. And interestingly, I was stifling my voice by using and abusing food not something I would have wanted you to know about me. A clear manifestation of this was being diagnosed with thyroid disease soon after that lovely toilet moment that you just heard about. And interestingly, your thyroid is located near your vocal cords. I believe that after years of misuse, my body had shut down my voice. I'm wondering where you might be blocking your voice. I realized it was time to be the lead researcher in my life. That the theory I had collected about myself was frankly pretty terrible. Not great, not supportive, not one any of us would want to live by. And I also saw that it was really time to course correct to rewrite my life dissertation, because this one was not doing, not serving so well. It was time to rewrite my story. So I want to tell you what it means to get a PhD in you, because you're probably wondering, okay, what the heck is this about? What is she getting to the point? So what it means to get a PhD in you is to make you the focus of study. It's to research yourself like never before. It's to ask yourself questions that dig way deeper to uncover what brings you utter joy, excitement, passion. It's about turning the focus inward. It's also like researching a project that you would if you had a $20 million grant. It's believing that the ROI return on investment, for those who don't know, the ROI of investing in yourself is priceless. It's worth every ounce of hard work, every all-nighter, I've done those, every ounce of sweat and tears. Because the thing is, it's about mastering your inner world first to then master your outer world. Here's my take on it. I really don't think any of us came here to live a life of stagnation. I mean, I don't know about you. I'll just say for me, I am 
not here just for things to be fine. I don't know who, does anyone really want fine? Raise your hand if you just want fine. I just think I have one person. I did, one person. It's okay, fine's cool. I don't want fine, I want more. I want to be in life of purpose. I don't want to live just in a bubble. We're here for a reason. And it's not just about living a life of stagnation, although here's the thing. While it's not just about you, it starts with you. So if you have children or nieces and nephews that you care about, or you care about the kids that are growing up in our society today, then by you being your youest you is about our future generation. If you are married or take care of children or are an influencer in some way, you actualizing your skills and gifts and talents is about contributing and adding value and health and growth to our society and to our world. All right, so everybody now is really familiar with a PhD, right? It means a doctorate in philosophy, but this wouldn't be a TED Talk if I didn't reframe somehow, so I'm gonna reframe it. So I'm gonna invite you to look at a PhD as a doctorate in possibility and potentiality. It's about the possibility of stepping into your USU. And it's about the power of living into your fullest potential. I'm here to share the syllabus. All right, so get ready. Here's the syllabus and how you can research yourself like never before and how to earn what I believe is the most prestigious honors of all. That is getting a PhD in your sacred self. And here's how you can do it for free. So this deep study of you is comprised of three main modules. Get ready. What do they stand for? Those three main modules are comprised of the letter P, wait for it, H, and D. Get back to the one. Just in case you forgot, it's up now there behind me. P, H, and D. So we're gonna start with the first module. The first module is about the P, not the bathroom. We're talking about the P, which stands for past, as in your past story. So first, I would invite you to look and do a little research into your past story. Seriously, look and see what have you, what stories have you been living out? What's the research you've been doing on yourself? What are the findings? What stale and limited beliefs are you still believing? By looking and combing through your life data, you can see what is serving you and what is not. I wanna share a quick story with you. I worked with a 32-year-old woman, a client of mine, who decided to let go of fear and invite some serious courage. And she decided to find her birth mother at 32. She decided to rewrite her entire story. See, I realized that my double nature in people pleasing and crappy self image was doing nothing to add value to the planet. Not at all. It was keeping me very, playing very small. And I saw that my past story of abusing food and frankly talking smack about myself was not the direction, it was not the story I wanted to live out. The second module, which you now know, is H. H stands for honor, as in honoring you, yourself. The question to ask is, how, if at all, are you honoring who you really are, who you came here to be? How are you honoring your unique gifts and talents and skills and attributes? I had the honor of doing this. We'll come back to that in a minute, give you the story. First, I wanna say that one of the best ways to learn to honor yourself 
is through a mirror. What do you usually say to yourself when you're getting up in the morning and brushing your teeth? It's usually not so kind, right? We say things to ourselves, I don't know about you, it actually happened this morning. I was getting ready and I'm like, all right, ready for this talk. And I looked in the mirror and I said something, I was like, that was not great. And then I thought, oh, great, I'm talking about this today. Perfect timing. I do this work, I practice this every day, and I still do that, right? But I saw I was not saying very kind things to myself, and here is the thing, here is the thing to note, that what you say to yourself, those inner thoughts, they speak volumes about your inner beliefs. They'll tell you how you feel about yourself. So the mirror is a phenomenal place to create inner healing and to honor yourself. I did have the honor of doing that activity with girls at a girls coding and empowerment camp. And I wanna share with you that I had a mother come up to me and she said, Julie, for the first time, my daughter has said kind things to herself. And I thought to myself, what if we did this with young girls or children at an early age? What if you learn to say kind things to yourself and really believe it and really feel it? Well, I also want to share that I do this with executives and leaders, and it's had the same profound, incredible impact. It is never too late to do this work. I believe that this process of learning to honor yourself, using the mirror to be your USD you, without judgment, is one of the most healing aspects of anything you will do. So I told you about my thyroid breakdown, and I saw that I was not honoring myself, not at all. In fact, I was probably the meanest to myself. And what's amazing is that the moment I started to shift gears, I started to be kind to myself and honor who I am, I had a miraculous health transformation. My whole thyroid condition and how I feel and my well-being shifted gears 100%. The third and final module of the PhD syllabus is D. And D stands for direction. What direction do you want your life to take? See, I realized at 2.32 a.m. that sitting on the toilet, eating frozen cookies in secret, and binging, or frankly, I could have been stealing your food and putting them in my pockets, that was really not the direction I wanted my life to go in at all. I realized my life was asking for a whole new direction in my marriage, my career, my spiritual connection, my parenting, and most importantly, with myself. And I saw it was time to rewrite the story, the PhD dissertation in me. I essentially went from sitting on a throne on the toilet. I know, lovely visual. That was reenacted, in case you were wondering. Of eating frozen solid cookies. To having the honor of sitting on a majestic rock at Canyon Ranch Spa and Resort, a dream of mine. By applying the three PhD modules that I shared with you, I was able to change my seat in life. So I'm wondering, what seat are you taking? What are you here to do, to be? What did you come here to express? How will you take the best from your past while honoring your present, who you are, to live in the direction of your dreams? Who is the you is you? What is your life dissertation about? How are you going to share that with the world? So here's the thing. I urge you to start with the mirror. All right, so maybe it's the rear view mirror in your car when you leave today, or there is going to be a break shortly. And during your pit stop, seriously, people, go to the bathroom, go look in the mirror. Everyone's going to be looking at the mirror together. Look at the mirror and look at yourself. Stare in your eyes and ask these questions. What is my life dissertation about? Am I willing to do the research? Am I willing to honor myself fully? 
And if so, by when? If you don't do this coursework, and you don't share your findings, you're denying the world of who you really are, of your USU. When I went back to the school of myself and got a PhD in me, my entire life transformed. And you certainly can do the same. It's up to you, because I've now given you the whole syllabus. So it's up to you if you want to enroll and take on this work. Here's the thing, though, that I'll leave you with. If you decide to become your USU, and you do, and you decide to do this work, and you do, then as each of us and all of you become your USU, then we as a collective become our weest we. And I'd argue that it's time that the world, given the state of the world events, it's time and the world is ready for all of us to step into this place of becoming a collective of our weest we, because we then become the change. And as we become the change that we wish to see in the world, I can only imagine how much more of a magnificent place this world will be. And just remember, it starts with you. Thank you.